Next, let us take a look at arrays. So here I have a new class called example arrays. Now, what are arrays? Imagine I want to store a bunch of data. I can store data like this. So here I'm storing some data that is integer a equal to 10, integer b equal to 20. I'm also declaring like variables like c, d, and e. And I'm storing c as 30, d as 40, e as 50. Like I can have them in one line, I can have them in multiple lines, it doesn't matter. So I can store a bunch of numbers like this. But this doesn't look like an efficient way of storing numbers. I want to store five numbers. This doesn't look like an efficient way. And I'm likely to run out of variable names too. So another way to do it, maybe I can do the same thing like this. So let me comment out this block of code. To comment out this block of code, you can just select it, click on source, and then say add block comment. So this whole thing will be like blocked. So here I have like int a1 equal to 10, a2 equal to 20. Like this, I can declare all the numbers. But this still does not look efficient. So what is an efficient way of storing large amounts of data, uniform data? So to do that, let me block this code. An efficient way of storing large amounts of uniform data is called arrays. So if you want to store a large amount of data, the best way to store the data is so here I have declared an array of A. So how you declare an integer array is you say integer square brackets A equal to all the numbers that you want to store in an array. Once you declare something like this, what happens is internally Java will create a boxes like this. Since we name the array A, it will label the boxes like this. So here you can see that we create an A array and it has five numbers. So Java internally will create five boxes, one, two, three, four, five, and it will label the boxes as A of zero, A of one, A of two, A of three, A of four. This is read as A of zero, A of one. And it will put those five numbers in these boxes. So this is an array, an efficient way of storing a bunch of homogeneous data. So if you want to access some data in this array, all you have to do is try to print out like say A of 2 and A of 4, it will print out 30 and 50. So let us print out something from the array. So here you can see that I am trying to print out A of 2 and then there is a space and then I am trying to print out A of 4. Remember, arrays always start at 0, so A of 2 will print out, this is A of 0, A of 1, A of 2, 30, and then A of 4 is 50. So let us save this and run this. So you can see that 30 and 50 are being printed out. Now you may ask, like, what if I want to loop through all the numbers and print out all the numbers in the array? To loop through all the numbers, you can use something called as a for each statement or an enhanced for statement. The way to write a for each statement or enhanced for statement is for now the data type of the array, whatever the data type of the array, in this case the data type of the array is integer, integer, some temporary variable, colon, and then the name of the array a. Curly braces, curly braces, and inside this you can print out the temp variable. So what happens in this case is, let us save and run this. You can see that all the values in the array, that is 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 have been printed. So how this enhanced for work is, the very first time it comes and sees this for int temp colon a, it takes the first value of a, the first value of the array a and puts it in temp and then it is printing out temp. The second time it loops through, it takes a second value of A and puts it in this temp and then it prints out temp. So this is an enhanced for statement. Of course, it is not required that whenever you declare an array, you should immediately give all the numbers in that particular array. You can first declare an array and then you can assign numbers to it like this. So in this case, I have declared an array called X and I'm saying like new int of five. That means this X array will have five numbers. So immediately Java behind the scene will create five boxes. 
and label them as x of 0, x of 1 till x of 4. Remember, arrays always start at 0. Now, since we have just declared the array, like here, and since that array x does not have any values, by default, it will put the value 0. So here you can see that 0 is the value available. Of course, you can always assign data later, like this. So here you can see that I am assigning x of 3 is 25 and x of 0 as 12. So x of 0 will be 12 and x of 3 would be 25. Let us loop through this particular array. I can have some temporary variable. So here I have some temporary variable temp2. I am going to loop through this x array and going to print it out. Let us save and run this. To differentiate between this printout and this printout, I am just going to have this dash 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 printed in between. Save and run. So here you can see that it is printing out this other array with 12, 0, 0, 25 and 0. 12, 0, 0, 25 and 0. The zeros are default if you don't give any values for an integer array. Of course, you can create any type of arrays. You can also create string arrays if you want. So here I have a string array called st, which has 1, 2 and 3 and I can loop through string arrays. So you can see that it is printing out 1, 2 and 3. Same way I can create, I am creating an empty string array and inside which, so here I am creating an empty string array inside which I am placing the text 25 and text 12. You can see that these are not numbers, I have put them within double quotes. So let us save and run this. So same way here I am declaring a string array of 5 and I am putting the text 25 and text 12 in the string array of 3 and string array of 4 and I am looping through this particular string array. Now the one big difference between a declaring a string array and declaring an integer array is I told you if you declare an integer array by default all the values will be 0 and then you can assign numbers but for string array the default is null values. The default is null values. So here, so here instead of zeros, you are going to have null values and null here. And when you save and run this, you can see that 12, null, null, 25 and null are being printed.